Our next caller is Gabriel from Florida. Hey, what's up, Gabe? I feel like we know you. Yeah. Uh, maybe. <laughs> what's going on, buddy? What's happening, guys? How you guys doing? Good, good man. Good, man. What you got for us? What's your question? All right, perfect. So here's my question. So there's usually like a a checklist, a prerequisite of things you want to take care of before if you want to do a movement like a like a snatch, right? Like so there's some mobility checkpoints that you want to just uh, make sure you cover. Uh, my question is, is there anything for like a sprint? I might be, you know, overanalyzing this, but I feel like I want to do a sprint, but I'm not too sure if I'm if I'm there yet to do such an explosive movement. Okay. Um, well, let's get a little bit more specific here, Gabriel. For you in particular, um, number one, are you looking for injury reduction or performance enhancement? Because there's two, you can do it kind of two different ways. And then number two, where do you notice the issues in your body when you run or sprint? Or do you notice any yeah. issues? Uh, so first off, it wouldn't be for performance. It wouldn't be for uh, rehab or anything. I do want to just uh, implement uh, sprinting to my uh, routine. Anytime I try to get on a treadmill, do cardio, it actually turns into a sprint because I could just get a, either bored or, or I don't know, something. Um, so I do want to incorporate that, but I want to do it the right way. Last time I did uh, win a full-out sprint, I want to say about 30, 40 yards. I noticed uh, it really sore like in my right butt to be honest with you. So I'm just not too sure if it's, if I'm even, or if I'm just uh, doing it the right way, because I know that when you take an explosive movement, you just want to make sure you're, you got your bases covered. With sprinting, mm -hmm. I would, I would start from the, the ground up, right? So I look at uh, the way your feet are striking on the ground, your ankle mobility, your, your foot and, and uh, foot strength and control, your ankle stability. I would look at that first, because even if you're feeling things in the hips or the low back or working your way up the kinetic chain, most likely it's stemming from what's going on with the way you're impacting the ground. So when it comes to running, that's the first place I'm going to look at and address and yep. assess. So I'm sure, I know you have most of our programs. You have Prime Pro? Yep, I do. Yeah, so I would work on the, the toes and feet and ankle, work in that area first, and then work your way up the body. And most things that are stemming from are stemming from the feet. I appreciate so if this. I'm looking at my feet, if I'm recording, like I, I would probably record myself, I guess, running towards the camera. Am I looking for something, some kind of deviation? If I'm like, for instance, if my feet are collapsing or, or any kind of way, like what am I looking for? Yeah, I would say you're, what you're really looking for, not, not to get too technical, um, but if what you're really looking for is a difference between the right and the left side. But ankle, proper ankle mobility should help either way, but do it in a more dynamic fashion, right? So you know how normal combat stretch, you get into the position and you activate while, and you hold that position for a second? Yep. But before doing explosive movement, it might be a little bit more dynamic. You move into the position, activate, and then move out. And then move into it, activate, and then move out. The second thing for performance, believe it or not, studies will show that doing a few sets of a heavy exercise before a sprint actually increases speed. So and I don't. this is not at a high intensity, but let's say you were to get uh, you know, uh, some dumbbells, bring them to the track and you did five kind of heavy-ish squats, and then you waited about a minute, and then you sprinted, um, studies mm -hmm. will show that that can actually increase someone's uh, explosive power uh, as well. Yeah, I appreciate this question a lot because a lot of people don't even consider that. How many explosive movements have you done besides running and sprinting? Uh, so I like a box jump, like I can go to maybe j just below my rib cage, mm -hmm. uh, of, as far as height. So I can do those. I can do that. I mean, like if you want to, if you want to consider that. Yeah. I would just consider like maybe implementing in your programming a bit more, a variety of explosive movements that you get more repetition with, and you can build up that sort of resilience with your joints, uh, to be able to handle that kind of a stress, uh, just to, to get the, the response of the fast twitch muscles, uh, takes a lot. It exposes a lot of imbalances and things that, uh, will reveal themselves to you. So, uh, you know, to do those in short bouts and really like, you know, focus on the reps of, uh, you, you know, like short bouts, even like with a, uh, a sled and, and being able to be a little more explosive with, you know, driving the sled forward will help a lot. I'm going to keep going back to the ankle and foot stuff. Uh, Gabe, you have your phone on you? Uh, I do. I, sh I shouted this guy out on the show the other day, and I don't think this episode has aired yet. So check this dude out. I, I really like the content that he puts out. I think it's a great place for you to like practice a lot of the movements that he has on there. His Instagram handle is uh, Real Game Period Athletics. 
and yeah. it, it's it's all body weight, explosive movements, and he's all about technique. Uh, and there's a lot of foot and ankle stability and explosiveness in there. I think there's a really there's a lot of really good exercise. I've been trying to get him out here to get on the YouTube channel so we can share some of his content. Yeah, another guy would be Joe DeFranco. Yeah. You know, there was some controversy a while ago because Joe, Joe DeFranco talked about how driving a sled would improve someone's speed in the sprint, and everybody, a lot of people disagreed with him. Well, it turns out he was totally right. Studies actually showed that driving a sled uh, would improve somebody's sprint speed so that's something else you can do um, now you guys are both kind of addressing performance stuff where right? he's asking prerequisite stuff that's the reason why i keep going back to yeah. like yeah i mean if to me like what everything that boys are saying right now i 100 percent agree with like to improve your sprinting but if they're if you're talking about prerequisites and what there might be a breakdown or dysfunction i'm looking at the feet and sal said earlier like very there's normally a discrepancy between left or right if you go through prime pro and you do all the all the tests you'll probably notice one side will be more challenged than the other address that side that's more challenging and focus on that and then i'd be doing exercises to really strengthen and work on the mobility in my ankle and in my feet okay yeah yeah i'll make sure to do that and it's funny that you bring up the sled sal because when you mentioned doing a heavy uh exercise beforehand i was going to ask if uh, using a sled would be best to do so. So I am going to just uh, take out the sled and just maybe do some heavy pulls or pushes uh, prior to doing a uh, a sprint. Um, and, and then my question will be to, to Justin, a follow up. He mentioned doing other explosive movements. Are there any recommendations for an explosive movements that I can add to um, add repetitions? Yeah. Um, basically, if, if you're going to emulate a sprint, I would do those in like, have you ever done liners or do short bouts where uh, you, you do it in a controlled way where we're just going to run and sprint and then stop and, uh, you know, and like make uh, make that uh, specificity uh, a priority in terms of the mechanics of the running. So to, to get off, work on the, the start, uh, add a rubber band uh, to your belt so you have some resistance when you pull forward, uh, basically do some slam ball. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with medicine balls to add explosivity. There's, there's ice skaters. Yeah, there's, ice. yeah, there's lots of stuff. Like you, you mentioned box jumps, uh, you know, you mentioned, uh, so just, just thinking along those lines in terms of, uh, moving very quickly, but under control. I love ice skaters okay. and doing them like barefoot. So really work on the foot and ankle stuff that I keep talking about. And then doing things like ice skaters where you're doing them barefoot and again, the idea when you're doing this to work on mechanics, it's not about how much weight or how many reps you could do. It's about perfecting the movement and just making it look extremely fluid and beautiful on both sides. That's the reason why I recommended this guy that uh, check out his videos. I mean, I, I think he, he demonstrates so many different exercises that you can be implementing. And then the goal should be to be able to emulate them like that to where it looks that perfect if you're firing on all cylinders on on both sides like that you're going to be pretty damn well good. and it's, it's he's he's a great example of being able to add like a lot of acceleration but also the same amount of intensity on deceleration so both of those in combination is what's going to give you the best mechanics all right perfect i appreciate it no problem man and thanks for your support brother always appreciate it yeah, yeah. have a good one gabe uh, yeah. well at le least i can do right on man yeah, that's a really that's a very uh, nuanced question to try mm -hmm. and help somebody with. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I and I, mean, I kind of know Gabe, right? So we, he, I've been on his podcast, and he's been listening to Mind Pump for a really long time. So I kind of have somewhat of an idea of his fitness level, and I just feel like before the por performance recommendations come in, I think addressing like foot, ankle stability, strength, yeah. and hip first getting that all really well and oh, then yeah. implementing those yeah. things because you know i think this is a classic example of you know you're, he's not a serious athlete he's just a he's a fit guy who's into working out and improving himself improving himself and then wanting to jump right into like the athletic performance type of stuff uh when, when i know he's older he's not a young kid you know what i'm saying like he's probably got a lot of stuff to work on first yeah and i try to take it a little bit further make sure people know like you know if you're gonna go ramp to a hundred uh you know if you're out there like running and you want to get into sprinting really like 
gradually work your way up to a hundred percent. So it's, you know, it's, it's scales, it's, it's 50, it's 60, it's 70. You want to like ramp that intensity up. So, you know, your body can respond appropriately. Cause that's a lot of stress all at once that could, you know, end up in injury. You know who else has a lot of really good stuff. And he did it during uh, his rehab of his Achilles is our good friend, uh, Corey. Corey Sle- yeah. Corey Schlesinger has some good stuff and what's his handle. It's school of strength or I always mess up or stress, uh, uh, slash strength. Slash strength. That's what mm-hmm. it is. Sorry. Yeah. And I mean, I did ask him if it was performance or, you know, that he was interested in. He did say performance, but here's the deal. If, no, if he you have an that. issue, he did. He no, did. no, no, no. You asked him that. He didn't say it was performance. He, he said, said, he said prerequisite stuff. He, yeah. But then when I asked him specifically, he said he wanted to improve to, his performance. Yeah. But here's the thing. You're uh, both right. And here's the, well, no, here's the point. <laughs> here's the point I want to make is that people don't realize that moving better and improving your connection mobility will improve your performance. Exactly. Right. So if that's right, right. the issue... Uh, that's then, why I say focus stay focused on. there. You stay focused yeah. on just right. getting better mobility, better ankle stability, better foot strength. That's going to translate into better performance. Right. And it's the place to start. What ends up happening to most people that ask questions like this is you jump right to the stuff that's interesting. Uh-huh. Oh, explosive jump boxes and ice skaters and doing like dynamic movements. And you just haven't done. And that, so I thought he answered, asked the question perfect. Like he asked, what are the prerequisites? What are some of the mm-hmm. things before I go get into all these explosive exercises and movements for performance? What are some of the things I should look at? When I think of a, a, a good runner, it starts from their feet. They got great feet connection. They got a great takeoff there. And if they don't, it normally works its way up the connect chain. They got issues in their knee or their hip or their low back because something's not firing. And the, and the last point too is, you know, if you're really serious about sprinting and running, uh, it, it, they're a good running or sprinting coach is worth their weight and sure, gold. Sure, sure. It's such a technical thing. People don't realize how technical sprinting can be. Um, that if you have somebody who knows what to look for specifically, that's their profession. Mm-hmm. They can make a oh, huge difference. I wouldn't even if a client that was if a client was really serious to spr- uh, sprinting and they came to me, I would be the I would be the first to admit like I'm not your guy. I would outsource. Yeah, it's 100%. just like Olympic lifting. It's like yeah, I can give you some basic tips and technique, and I can maybe look at where mm-hmm. there's dysfunction. And help you, but I, I, by no means am I a an expert in that field. And if you're very serious about getting good at it, then I, I agree with you, Sal. 